Great. Please go ahead. Hi, I'm Natisha Massafoy. I'm the Executive Director of Women's Health Women's Hands Community Health Center. And I'm here with my colleague. I'm Peggy McIntosh. I work at the Wellesley Centers for Women in Massachusetts. Thank you for speaking to us. Um, I wondered if you could answer the question of what uh, the core of your presentation today was about. The, I think the core goal of the presentation is, is to really get the audience to look at areas where they have unearned privilege and also unearned disadvantage. And we wanted to do that through using our own personal experience, our own personal testimony to talk about places where we've experienced both and for people to understand our histories. I personally also wanted my colleagues to understand that I didn't just wake up and start talking about this, that there's a whole history behind how I understood myself, how I understood what my role is as an ED of an organization that professes to be anti-oppressive, but also from a very personal place, what each of us can do to a, understand our disadvantage and understand our privilege and then use that to overturn oppressive powers that are impacting ourselves and our clients. Okay. And how did you feel about the response um, you got from the audience today? How, how did you, you've done, this is my first time doing this, Peggy's done this many, many we times. We used an interactive pedagogy and it was terrific. The audience was excellent. And uh, they talked one-on-one -on -one to each other about one or more ways in which they personally have unearned advantage and unearned disadvantage. Because everybody in the room has both. Mm -hmm. Human beings have both. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the questions widened out to encompass health providing settings, and then they widened further to Notitch's final question to the group. How can you use whatever unearned power you have mm -hmm. to weaken the systems of unearned power in the health communities and workplaces you know best? Mm -hmm. And what would you hope uh, the participants will take from this session, specifically to, to go into their, their, their lives after the conference and their workplaces after the conference? Well, I know for me, it's, it's understanding that as healthcare professionals, we sit in a very, very important place, and we actually have the ability to make change, not only in people's lives, but in the healthcare system, and that collectively, we have 600 people in the room, so if they took something away from the session that they were able to go back and implement in their organization, we've just done, we've covered the entire province, we are going to impact how many clients, and I, I think that what we'll be looking at is a more equitable healthcare situation for especially the marginalized in the province. So our goal as organizations is to ensure that all Ontarians have equal access to healthcare. And you can't do that if you're not looking at oppression, if you're not looking at your unearned privilege, and if you're not looking at ways to change that. Okay, thank you. And my presentation was about how I came to see I have white skin privilege. And I distributed a list of 26 ways in which I have earned white skin privilege by contrast with my African American friends in my building. And the white privilege, which I was taught not to recognize, is the upside of discrimination. It's the exemption from discrimination. It's the benefits you get from a system in which others are pushed down, but you are not. That pushes you up. Mm -hmm. And um, I describe that the, that brings power to me. And a question is, can I use my power? Do I want to use my power as a white person to weaken the system of white power? And um, it's a choice one makes if one's white. Some people think it's a choice whites must make. But I say it all depends on your values. But for me, it has transformed my life to use my power to weaken the systems of power. And one of the ways we used our power today is to enforce a system of uh, discussion in which nobody can interrupt. Everybody will talk for equal amounts of time. And everybody will listen for equal amounts of time. Mm -hmm. There is no crosstalk and there is no building what one's heard. It, you testify about your own experience, not your opinions, 
but your experience. Mm -hmm. And that has a brand new politics to it. And as a white, I care about that very much. Distributing the listening, distributing the speaking, and preventing what the world calls dialogue. Mm -hmm. We were not in dialogue. We were doing what I call serial testimony, taking turns mm -hmm. to tell parts of our story. And we are the sole authority on our own experience. Nobody else can argue with us about our experience. And serial testimony protects that truth, mm -hmm. the integrity of you and your own experience. It's a thrilling way to, to run our session. Yeah, it's, it's very powerful. And hopefully people will be bringing this back to their own centers. Um, well, in one way or another. Yes, yeah. and I want to conclude my little bit here by saying it's not about blame, shame, or guilt. Mm -hmm. It's about recognizing you have power mm -hmm. and deciding how you're going to use it, if you wish to use it toward social justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was very clear in both of your presentations that it's empowering to, to recognize your privilege. Yes, yeah. and transformative. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you.